Jy luister na RSG Geldsake met MoneyWeb potgooie met gasseer Rijk van die Kerk. RSG Geldsake met MoneyWeb Elke week saan tussen 6 en 7. Die kleinhandelgroep Woolworths het vandag tussentijdse winstcijfers vir die laaste 6 maanden van verlede jaar aangekondig. Die groepse omzet uit sy voortgesette bedrijvigere wat basis die Australiese bezigheid David Jones uitsluit wat verlede jaar verkoop is, het met 5% tot 37,5 miljard rand gestuig. Die weesensverdienste was 7,5% laar op 2 rand en 3 cent per aandeel en die direct sette dividend van 1 rand 48 per aandeel verklaar. Roy Bagatini is die uitvoerende hoof. Roy, thank you so much for joining me. Your results you have reported are not really comparable with the previous periods as you have sold David Jones last year. But still, there seems to be a lot of headwinds, mostly from consumers who are under pressure. And Willis, of course, targets the most affluent segment of consumers. And it seems that even the rich people are feeling the pinch. You know, as you said, I mean, our reporting periods to date have always been with David Jones in the base. That's now gone. And so we now have what we define as our continuing operations, our businesses excluding David Jones. And the results we're talking about today are really those businesses it's true to say that when we look at the macro environment, it's been tough and it's tough for us here in South Africa and it's tough for all the retailers in Australia where consumer confidence is probably its lowest level since the financial crisis back in 2009-10. So it is tough. In our case, though, we're also coming off a very high performance period. Last year was our record performance. You would remember we declared record dividends, record earnings, etc. So it's a very high base we're comparing ourselves to. But notwithstanding, I think consumers are under pressure, disposable income is under pressure, and that does sort of play through to what we see for traffic and footfall in our stores. But what is important is if you look at our South African business, right? I mean, we grew our profits by 10%. And in this environment, really, I think a really respectable or very commendable sort of outcome. Our teams have done a great job at doing that in a very difficult environment. The food business is by far the biggest business within the group. It generated two-thirds of the group's revenue and nearly 60% of pre-tax profits during the period. But Checkers is also playing in that market and it's starting to target the higher income level clientele and they believe they are taking market share. Do you agree? Well, I mean, I think the numbers are probably the thing to look at, and I think facts are are really what speak for themselves. I mean, I can certainly tell you that what checkers do is different to what we do. We don't have the same strategy as ShopRite. Our strategy is much more quality sales, quality revenue, quality growth, and profitable business. I think they might well outperform us in terms of sales growth, but I think you need to look at whether those sales actually convert into profit margins and ultimately into returns. Our food business has had a particularly strong six months. Our like-for-like sales has, in fact, the fastest growing in the sector, which would tell you that we therefore are taking share. I mean, there's other players, obviously, in the sector, so they really, in a way, donate share. And so we're all aware of that, and some of them are a little bit more sort of stressed at the moment, and you've seen some of those headlines. But our food business is a very high return on capital business. We generate around just shy of 60% return on capital which is three to four times higher than anyone else in the sector. It's a remarkable business and it's growing. Our margins are higher than anyone else in the sector and our gross profit margins have grown and no one else is as in the sector. And that's all because of a number of the initiatives that we have around efficiencies and pricing. And all of this notwithstanding impacts of load shedding. We're very clear on who we are and what we're doing and that's what we're focused on. We're not obsessed about what the others out there are trying to do. One of the key strategies of Woolworths is the cold chain, where you can transport foodstuffs refrigerated or kept cool for throughout the whole supply chain, from the tree virtually to your fridges in the shops. Has that been difficult to achieve, given the load shedding we've seen over the last few months, the significant load shedding, especially at the end of last year? We are very committed to quality, as you know, and therefore the cold chain is a key component in delivering that. We have that eight-minute rule that no product, from the moment it's actually farmed and packaged all the way through logistics, all the way into our stores, if it's out of the cold chain for more than eight consecutive minutes, we actually remove it and we actually put it into our sort of food charity channels and our food bank channels and so on, but it's not available for sale in our stores. Our commitment is very strong around doing that. We've been having this cold chain advantage for a long time, so we've already invested very significantly in generator, generator capacity. 
all our stores, even before load shedding, had this sort of capability and capacity. And we've obviously sort of improved on that during the process of load shedding. It costs us you know, to keep these going, but our commitment to quality and the trade-off we make there is absolutely important for us. And it is a differentiator. You know, Most of our product that we sell is what we call fresh. You know, relative to some of the other brands in the market, for us, that's a big differentiator. So keeping the product fresh and maintaining the quality standards is an important differentiator. Your fashion business generates around 20% of the group's revenue and 30% of pre-tax profits. But the business has treaded some water during the period. And I think the clothing business in general in South Africa is tough going. How do you see the performance in the context of what's happening in the country and what do you foresee for the future? Yeah, I mean, I think there are two pieces to that, Rick. I think there's clearly the context, as we spoke about earlier, the challenging macro context, the environment stuff. But we're on a bit of a turnaround strategy with that business. And we sort of laid out the things we're doing to get the business back to where it needs to be. Our EBIT margins were around 6, 6.5% just three or four years ago. We're out now north of 12%. So we've been very focused on the underlying profitability, the underlying financial health of that business as we've continued to turn it around and grow. We have a lot of what we call self-help. One of our big challenges is getting the right product in the right quantities and the right sizes into the stores. And that's been a perpetual challenge with us and going back a long time. We're really focusing on that because we see that as a self-help opportunity to really shift the top line, notwithstanding the context. But overall, I mean, I think a reasonable result. We're not entirely satisfied with it. We'll never be entirely satisfied with a business that doesn't move forward in a more accelerated way. But what's been very important is to get the foundational stuff right. So a lot of the heavy lifting has been done. And now we can focus on growth going forward. We will go with that. Roy, thank you for your time. That was Roy Bakatini, the uitvoerende hoof van Woolworths. Ja, Johan, hy sê, hulle is nie heel te mal gelukkig daarmee nie. Ek denk, lyk met die mark was baie ongelukkig. Uh, die mark, uh, Woolies aandere prijs vandag 5.3% af um, tot 63, rand 40. En uh, dis nog steeds baie goedkoper as ShopRite, byvoorbeeld. Uh, die prijs vir diensteverhouding van Woolies is uh, 15.8 keer en uh, ShopRite staan op uh, 22 keer. Mm-hmm. Is correct, ek 5% daling wees hier die marks uh, verwachtinge bykie beter was, as het ons nou gehoor het, maar nog steeds, jy kyk na een verbruiker wat sikkel, jy kyk na beerdkracht, jy kyk na die, weet die, 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 die ketting wat ons het, waar op lokaties is in term van die um, havens en sovoorts, en jy kyk na die omgeving, en jy sê, 10% winste, nog steeds nie slecht nie, en hulle, hulle bly gefokus op kwaliteit, en op hulle operationele vermoens, en daai twee goed, denk ek, onderskei hulle van van die ander kleinhandelaars. Jy het geluister na RSG Geldzake met MoneyWeb potgooie elke weekdag om 7 namiddag. Vir meer MoneyWeb potgooie besoek moneyweb.co.za of laai die toepassing af en volg MoneyWeb News om dagelijks op hoogte te blijven.